It's funny, the main thing I worried about back when Sonic X Shadow Generations was first announced was how they would approach the story side of things. Sonic Generations, despite its high stakes, was a pretty lighthearted game, so naturally I worried this type of storytelling would clash with the more narrative-heavy character of Shadow. But apparently, all that worry was for nothing. Because with the new story trailer they revealed on Sonic Central, it really just looks like they've given us Shadow the Hedgehog 2, and it just happens to be bundled with Sonic Generations. Which honestly, it's just wild to be able to say unironically. I actually had trouble putting into words just how hyped this trailer made me for this game. But that's not gonna stop me word salading about it all over your ears anyway. So, tilt your head to the side, and let's get started on that, shall we? The trailer opens with a cinematic depicting Gerald Awakening Shadow for the very first time, and once you get over the fact that it's just Eggman's voice, albeit with a slightly more serene tone, we can finally focus on Maria, playfully running up to the pod to help welcome Shadow to the world. This is a really nice scene, and I think probably the only way they could have improved on it would be to actually show Maria as the first thing Shadow sees as he opens his eyes for the first time. And hey, they'll probably do just that in the game itself. From the trailer, we can see she literally is the first thing he sees. They just need to hammer that home for the full emotional payoff. I love how happy Maria looks running up the shadow. You could look at this as just her being happy to see the creature whose purpose it is to cure her illness, but I don't think for a second that's the reason. Maria likely shares the same fascination with science as her grandfather. She's probably been watching Shadow and Stasis for a long time, and with her friendly and inquisitive personality, just wants to greet Shadow when he wakes up. It's really nice to be back on the Ark, too. Feels kinda like coming home after a long time away. We then cut the shadow in white space as his thoughts are interrupted by Black Doom, whose eye floats above the zone in an armillary-like structure where it can watch his every move. I'm guessing this will be a feature of the hub world, allowing Black Doom to stalk and torment Shadow as he tries to put things right. Doom tells him that the promised time is near and that soon Shadow will be his. But Shadow responds with, Black Doom, I destroyed you once. Do it again. From what little we've heard so far, the writing is a huge improvement over the meta-era stuff, but I'm still curious to see how I'll feel about Kirk as Shadow's voice actor once I experience this game fully. I'm not entirely sold yet. There's just something about the cadence and tempo of his Shadow that doesn't quite convey emotion properly for me. That was always the reason that, despite enjoying David Humphrey's take best for its more obvious emotional range, I still always liked Jason Griffith's shadow a lot. His more monotone and gruff shadow still conveyed emotion really well. This could all change in the final product, though. He sounded great in Episode 1 of Dark Beginnings, so Kirk could end up blowing us all away. His combat grunts and yells are great too, and we get to hear them in all their glory as Shadow beats the sleep out of Black Doom's eye. We then see Shadow blasting through different stages while being taunted by Black Doom. I'm curious how they're going to handle the dialogue in some of these places, especially Kingdom Valley and Chaos Island. Will Shadow actually remember Kingdom Valley? Because he shouldn't. And what will he make of Chaos Island? Did he know of the events of Frontiers before Sonic? Will he go through the stage so quickly that he gets no real context? Or are we in for one of those memory wipes at the end of this game? Because I really hope it's not that one. Lazy ass storytelling that removes all the weight behind a narrative, as well as any responsibility from the writers to have their story make sense in the future. Let's hope not. We get a shot of Shadow using his wing power to reach Black Doom's eye in the sky, which I'm guessing will probably be one of, if not the final boss. We then see the first of two huge things I speculated wildly about actually happen, and have Frontier-style interactions with different characters across the map. Rouge, Omega, Silver, Gerald, Maria, and I don't know about you guys, but this purple shit looks a bit mephilous -y to me. Yeah, baby, Mephilus is back. Now all I can do is wonder how involved he's gonna be. Will he just be a throwaway boss? Or will he be hinted at or appear all throughout Kingdom Valley? And who will voice him? It'll be weird hearing anyone other than Dan Green, but I really can't see that happening. Or will he even speak at all? Although to be honest, Mephilus's? Mephiles? Mephiles's? Memphis's whole shtick was talking. He was a master manipulator, and if he doesn't give that vibe off here, why even bring him back at all? Yeah, he's definitely gonna run his mouth. 
And how awesome is it that he tried to kill Shadow with the same attack he used to kill Sonic? Dude means business, but Shadow is just too ultimate for his life form. We then see Shadow rushing through what looks to be Sunset Heights from Sonic Forces, and as he dodges and grinds through the war zone of giant Eggman robots, all I can wonder to myself is… is Infinite coming back? If someone as obscure and forgotten as Mephilus is returning, you have to imagine there's a good possibility for Infinite too. That guy got done dirty with the riding in forces, and what a colossal waste of Liam O'Brien's voice that game was. For his cult following of fans, I really hope he gets to come back and have his redemption, even if it's only fleeting. He does have a history with Shadow after all, so it would be kinda weird not to. After beating up some more of Black Doom's army, we see Shadow taking on Metal Overlord. I need them to use what I'm made of for this fight. I don't care what needs to happen, I want it. It'll be interesting to see how they justify Shadow beating him without going super when Sonic couldn't. I'm guessing by using his Doom powers, but it's still weird. Everything is then interrupted by the Time Eater, who you'd nearly be forgiven for forgetting about with how jam-packed with villain Shadow's story is, but I do wonder how involved he'll be. Will it just be a case of him letting Black Doom loose on the timeline? Because in the trailer, he appears to be between an image of Earth and the Ark. Are we going to get to see Shadow save the Earth from the Ark again? Doubt it, but I'm on board for it anyway. We then move on to the second holy shittest thing I speculated on in a previous video, and that is Shadow actually getting to see and speak to Maria again in white space. Can we just take a minute to recognize how surreal that's gonna be? I'm equally excited and terrified about how it will go. It's like one of those mysteries in the series you never thought you'd see. What would Shadow say to Maria if he could speak to her again? That's just f***ing wild, I can't wait. This story looks like it's gonna be full on mental torture for Shadow, because unless they go for one of the most batshit, balls to the wall crazy rewrites a series could ever do, I can't see Maria being saved. So Per Shadow will basically be talking to the ghost of a loved one he can never have back. Despite saving her being his original purpose, he will effectively have to ensure her death happens if he wants to put the timeline back the way it should be. That is rough. But holy shit this game guys, and that's not even including the movie Shadow content or the rest of the Dark Beginnings episodes that haven't dropped yet. How is this game going so hard? It's incredible! Based on the first episode alone, Dark Beginnings needs to be included with every copy of this game. I'd go as far as saying it's a mandatory watch and should be used as the opening cutscenes, they're just that good. But now I'd love to hear what you guys think. Team Dark reunions? Shadow meeting Maria? Implications for future stories? Let me know your thoughts on all of this in the comments. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe, and make sure to turn on notifications to see more from me. If you'd like to support the channel and see your name credited at the end of my videos, you can check out my Patreon or become a channel member. Any support is much appreciated, and a huge thank you to the awesome people who already have. But for now, a big thank you for watching. And as always guys, Take care.